dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig in Death, we're going to be talking about blocks and switch. A block can be used to create a new scope in Zig, and in that scope you can define variables and do whatever whatever else you can do uh, in Zig code. But you have to be aware that any uh, uh, variables that you define within that uh, block are are going to be uh, cleaned up, eliminated, basically once the curly brace the end curly brace of the block um, is is reached so in this case as we mentioned here in this comment uh, x which is defined within this block is not going to be available down here when we're trying to print it out so if i try to uncomment this line you see that i get a, a an error immediately that says use of undeclared identifier x okay because x was defined within the block and uh, the block ends right here so that scope it finishes right here at this curly brace line 8 okay another use for blocks is uh, as expressions okay so you can uh, use a block as an expression uh, giving it a label and in combination with the break uh, keyword and that label you can return a value from the block okay and this is really uh, useful um, technique in Zig that you're going to see a lot in, in lots of Zig code. Here basically we are defining the constant x and we're using this label blk with the colon. This basically uh, when you have an identifier followed by a colon it's basically a label. Um, here's the opening curly brace and in the block we are defining a couple of here we have a variable y, a constant z, and we are breaking here using the label this time the column comes before the identifier be okay and here we're telling uh, that break uh, statement what what we want to return from this block okay so basically uh, the result from uh, this uh, block expression is going to be uh, the result of this addition y plus z okay and here we print out uh, the result in the variable x okay and now, once we have seen blocks, we can talk about the switch statement uh, in Zig. Uh, switch is pretty much uh, uh, very similar to what you have in other languages. A lot of the tricky parts of, of switch in other languages um, have been improved or corrected in Zig, as we'll see. Here, uh, we're opening the switch. We have to, as in the if, we, are, we have to use the parentheses over the surrounding the value that we're going to be testing. And uh, here we have an example of how we can use a range in a switch. Uh, in a switch, uh, the ranges are uh, defined with the opening and, and, uh, and the closing bounds uh, joined in the middle by three dots. And uh, these are inclusive of both bounds, both uh, the from and the to. So if x is from 0 to 20 inclusive, it would uh, execute uh, this uh, stud debug print. Uh, these are what, what are known as prongs of the switch. So this would be the, the prong that would be uh, selected. Here we have an example of uh, how you can uh, test uh, separate values in combination in one single prong. Uh, which is basically the same uh, functionality as, as is known as fall through in other programming languages. Well, here you just put the values separated by commas, and any one of these that matches will uh, cause this prong to be the one that's uh, selected. Okay. Here uh, we have a range, but now we're demonstrating how we can capture uh, the value that actually matched. Okay. So. Um, here it could be anything from 40 to 60 inclusive and n is going to be uh, precisely what uh, which one of those numbers was the one that matched okay and we, we can print it out okay here we have an example of using a block uh, when we uh, want to do some more complex uh, computations in a prong if uh, the, the match is 77 uh, we can execute everything that's inside this block okay and here we have an example that demonstrates that even uh, the, the value that's going to be matched can, can be a, a complex expression 
given that uh, blocks in Zig are expressions, the only requirement is that uh, this uh, uh, this has to be com time known. Okay, so here we have no problem because we're basically defining uh, constants with literals. Uh, everything in here is com time known, and the result of this block uh, is being returned with break, and that would be uh, what would be uh, the test here. The value being tested would be uh, 102, as as the prong uh, print statement uh, specifies. And here we have an example of the else prong. This is basically the default if no, none of the other prongs match. Um, in Zig, a switch has to be an exhaustive switch, which means that you have to cover all of the possibilities. In this case, we're um, testing against a number, so basically it would be impossible to test all of the possibilities. So you have to have a, an else uh, prong. Uh, and in this case, if none of the other ones match, then this is the one that would be selected, okay? And as the same as with uh, if, um, the switch can also be used as an expression. So here we have an example of that. We're defining a constant called answer. And uh, that will be assigned whatever is the result of uh, uh, processing this switch, which once again, we're testing uh, against X. And we have uh, here a range prong, uh, specific literal prong, and the else, okay? And finally, we print out uh, the result. So let's save changes and see what we have here in the output. And as you can see, uh, everything uh, executes successfully, okay? So th that's basically uh, the fundamentals of blocks and switch in Zig. We're going to be seeing more of switch uh, when we cover enums and uh, unions and tagged unions uh, because in, in combination with those uh, types in, in Zig, the switch statement um, really shines in terms of power and flexibility. Okay, so uh, that's it for this one. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.